by the blue of Violet, Texas. That's where I long to go. Down where the folk make exit. It's the best place I know. Welcome to Texas History Lessons. My name's Michael, and I want to begin with a few quotes, some favorable and some not so favorable. First, let's begin with a quote from John Steinbeck in his book, Travels with Charlie in Search of America. I've said that Texas is a state of mind, but I think it is more than that. It is a mystique closely approximating a religion, and this is true to the extent that people either passionately love Texas or passionately hate it. And as in other religions, few people dare to inspect it for fear of losing their bearings in mystery or paradox. But I think there will be little quarrel with my feeling that Texas is one thing. For all its enormous range of space, climate, and physical appearance, and for all the internal squabbles, contentions, and strivings, Texas has a tight cohesiveness, perhaps stronger than any other section of America. Rich, poor, panhandle gulf, city, country, Texas is the obsession, the proper study, and the passionate possession of all Texans. Edna Ferber, an American novelist, short story writer, and playwright from Kalamazoo, Michigan, said, Texas history is as varied, tempestuous, and vast as a state itself. Texas yesterday is unbelievable, but no more incredible than Texas today. Today's Texas is exhilarating, exasperating, violent, charming, horrible, delightful, alive. And of course, everyone doesn't share such favorable opinions about the Lone Star State. If I owned Texas and hell, I would rent out Texas and live in hell, is a famous quote by 19th century United States Army General Phillips Henry Sheridan. And a brief quote from Justin Cronin's book, The Passage, that kind of sums up some people's feelings about the state. Special Agent Brad Wolgast hated Texas. He hated everything about it. He hated the billboards and the freeways and the faceless subdivisions and the Texas flag, which flew over everything, always as big as a circus tent. He hated the giant pickup trucks everybody drove. No matter that gas was 13 bucks a gallon, the world was slowly seeming itself to death like a package of peas in a microwave. He hated the boots and the belts and the way people talk. Y'all this and y'all that. As if they spent the day roping and riding, not cleaning teeth and selling insurance and doing the books like people did everywhere. If y'all are listening to this first episode, then there's a pretty good chance that you might be a little like me. You love history, or you have an interest in it, or you're from Texas, or at least you have an interest in that too. I've always had a great love for history, and I've always had a great love for a good story especially stories of adventure. And being born in Texas like I was, I've always had a treasure trove of great Texas history and adventures to learn about. As a child, I've devoured books about all aspects of the world, United States, and yes, Texas history. History was always my favorite class in school, and I was fortunate to have some wonderful teachers. That helped a lot. I took this love with me when I went to college and majored in history. I then followed that up by getting a master's degree in the subject. Not for a career choice. I'm far from a history teacher at the moment, but rather for the simple fact that I loved it and always wanted to learn more. My interest in history and the time I devoted to studying it and continue to devote to it is not wasted. This helps shape the way I see the world, how I look at others, and beyond that, I enjoy it. It's fun. And while I might focus on Texas quite a bit in this podcast, I feel that any endeavor to study a place or a people is lacking if you do not have a proper context for what was happening elsewhere in the region, the country, the continent, and all over the world. It all ties together. It provides perspective to look beyond just the one place to see what was going on elsewhere. For me, the study of Texas history is a study of a place and a people. And all of the people that have ever lived in Texas have come from somewhere else and have ties to other places and cultures. Primarily, I will be focused on the history of Texas, 
but as you'll see, that history is tied in with the history of the United States, North and South America, and the world. I might even venture into some not-so-Texas topics. After all, being from Texas, I'm prone to being a little independent and doing things my way. And yes, like that statement, we'll be looking at the stereotypes and the myths of Texas. We'll also look at art, music, literature, and just about anything that can add to the adventure. And there's a lot. You'll see. Do you ever look out the door of your house or out the window of your car or truck when you're going down the road and try to imagine what it might have been like to be in that same area a hundred, two hundred, even ten thousand years ago? I do. And it might seem a little odd, but that's where my head goes a lot of the time. If you haven't done it, give it a try sometime. Could you have survived without electricity, indoor plumbing, refrigerated and preserved foods from a grocery store? Imagine having to hunt and gather everything you ate in war. Imagine having to protect yourself from enemies that wanted the few things you did have, or from predators that just wanted you for a meal. Have you ever imagined what it was really like to trail a herd of Texas Longhorns up the Chisholm Trail? Or what it would have been like to see the vast herds of millions of buffalo? Or better yet, how it would have been to hunt a buffalo from horseback armed only with a bow, arrows, and your bravery. That is partly what this podcast will be doing, looking into the past and imagining what it was like. Consider a brief moment in your day when you can time travel with me to witness the events that occurred a long time ago in the world we live in. But maybe you aren't like me. Maybe you don't love history. That's okay. Everyone's different. Had I not had some of the good teachers in school and college that made history come alive, I might not be that interested either. Some people's relationship with history is one that is dull and filled with nightmares of having to remember long lists of dates that don't really hold that much significance to you. A bunch of dates and significant events is not really history. History is about how it all adds up to tell a story and explain why things are the way they are today. Now, there are several reasons to study history. I'm going to go through a few of them. I'm saving my personal favorite for the very last one. So get ready for that. Now, one of the main reasons history is important is that it helps us understand peoples and societies around the world. John Fee, in a book called Why Study History, reflecting on the importance of the past, wrote, History reminds us of the inherent weakness in the human condition and the very real possibility that our fellow human beings are capable of horrendous things. This should humble us, for there but for the grace of God go I. And I agree with that statement. All around the world, we have a long history of not being very good to one another. And that's very true about Texas history. On both sides of conflicts, horrible things were done to people. But at the same time, history also shows us that we're also capable of goodness. And we'll be looking at that too. History helps us understand change and how the society we live in came to be. John Garrity, who wrote a really nice book about called The American Nation, in his introduction or preface said, While history is certainly worth studying for its own sake, as a record of men's struggles and achievements divorced from present affairs, it can also serve as a tool for those who wish to understand how things have come to be as they are. That kind of ties into the first one I just mentioned. It helps us understand how our time is different from or similar to other periods. History helps you see the world around you in a new way. Erica Sumick said something along the lines that everything has a history. Trees have a history. Music has a history. Bridges have a history. Political fights have a history. Mathematical equations have a history. In fact, everything has a history. Learning about those histories can help us gain a deeper understanding of the world around us and the historical forces that connect us and continue to influence how we interact with each other and the environment. You see a trend. History helps us understand things. It helps us understand who we are, who people that might not seem that similar to us are, and we can see that we maybe are more alike than we aren't, just for except for maybe some little differences that happened along the way in our past. Peter N. Stearns wrote an essay called Why Study History in 1998, and in it he says that history contributes to moral understanding. 
And a good quote from that is, History also provides a terrain for moral contemplation. Studying the stories of individuals and situations in the past allows a student of history to test his or her own moral sense, to hone it against some of the real complexities individuals have faced in difficult settings. People who have weathered adversity, not just in some work of fiction, but in real historical circumstances, can provide inspiration. History provides identity. Studying history is essential for good citizenship. People like to use history for political means to promote this or that. I'm not that big a fan of this because I don't think a lot of people really know a lot of the deep detail of why things happened in the past. And it's easy to manipulate things to sway people just by quoting something from the past. I'm just going to be telling the story as close as to the facts as I can get them. So politics isn't going to be involved here. Uh, although my personal point of view might come through on some things, I'm going to try to just let the past be the past and let the people's lives tell their own story. Quoting again from Peter Stearns, History provides data about the emergence of national institutions, problems, and values. It's the only significant storehouse of such data available. It offers evidence also of how nations have interacted with other societies, providing international and comparative perspectives essential for responsible citizenship. Further, studying history helps us understand how recent, current, and perspective changes that affect the lives of citizens are emerging or may emerge and what causes are involved. More important, studying history encourages habits of mind that are vital for responsible public behavior whether as a national or community leader, an informed voter, a petitioner, or just a simple observer. And here we go. Here's my favorite. History can be fun. It can be important to our lives. One more quote from Stearns. History well told is beautiful. Biography and military history appeal in part because of the tales they contain. History as art and entertainment serves a real purpose on aesthetic grounds, but also on the level of human understanding. Stories well done are stories that reveal how people and societies have actually functioned. And they prompt thoughts about the human experience in other times and places. I will caution you regarding one thing. This is not a hagiography. I'm not going to ignore the ugliness that people have committed to others, even if it's a hero that's doing it to those people. But I'm also not going to bring heavy-handed knee-jerk judgment, and I will not use it to push, like I said, political views. Nothing angered me more when I was in graduate school than when a student inserted their political views into a subject. John Fee, again, from Why Study History, said, By trying to understand the past on its own terms... The historian treats it with integrity rather than manipulating it or superimposing his or her values on it to advance an agenda in the present. Practicing good history in this regard is not easy. Humans tend to be present-minded when it comes to confronting the past. The discipline of history was never meant to function as a means of getting one's political point across or convincing people to join a cause. I strongly believe that. I mean, you can do what you want with what you know and what you learn. Feel free. But I'm not going to be trying to push my personal perspective as, as much as I can on you. Um, I will call a, 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 an evil thing an evil thing. I think we'll be able to agree on that. And while it is often hard not to get lost in myth and legend of the past, my goal is to stick as close as I can to what can actually be known to break down the myths. But as a journalist Molly Ivan said, it's weird to tell, but the more a body tries to explode all the foolish myths that have grown up about Texas by telling the truth, the more a body will wind up adding to the mythology. And Larry McMurtry, who wrote the book Lonesome Dove, in an effort to do mythologize the myths and legends of the cowboy in the West, he even said that something to the effect that he just created a new mythology to add to it. I'm going to do my best to share interesting stories of all aspects of history, Texas or not, from the ancient Texans that first arrived thousands of years ago to Willie Nelson and his music. 
There are literally thousands of stories to share. We'll tear apart myths and find out that the reality is often as good or better. And sometimes I'm going to be bringing something I learned a long time ago. Other times it'll be something new. We're going to look at the Comanche, the Kiowa, the Wichita, the Caddo. We'll walk with the French explorers and the Spanish. Texas literature, art, music, and food. You ever heard of Bessie Coleman, the first African-American female pilot? You will hear. Fun facts. Unsolved mysteries. Texas Impressionist painters? Of course. Barbecue and nachos. Conquistadors, cowboys, and cotton farmers. Everything is a possible topic, and it's all right out my back door. My 7th grade Texas history textbook shared a very important truth, and it's one that I still believe. History is adventure. History is not dull and inert unless you are dull and inert. Or at least as long as the person that taught you the, 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 the class wasn't dull and inert. And then there's another quote from Faulkner that always springs to mind. The past is never dead. It's not even past. So if you will, let's get ready for some time traveling. Now some of the subjects I already have in mind, and there's a lot already, is looking at Texas myth and the mystique, ancient Texas. And that means going back a long ways, tens of thousands of years. The earliest Texans, early Texas exploration, Texas music, Texas authors, Texas artists, looking at the early Texas tribes. What was Texas like in 1492? What was Texas like when the Pilgrims arrived? What was Texas like in 1776? I can go on and on. 1861, 1914, 1941. We're going to be hitting all of that. The five big regions of Texas. Like I said before, Texas barbecue. The Delaware Indians of Texas? Yeah, they were here and they played an important role. Spanish Fort, Texas. Sam Houston. The Texas Revolution. The rivers of Texas and the importance they played in the development of the state. Writers like John Graves and Larry McMurtry and others. We'll look into Texas Red Chili, the bean controversy. If you don't know what that's about, believe me, some people really get upset about this. We're going to be looking at Hispanic Texas, African American Texas, Asian Texans. We're going to look at the foundations of cities like Dallas, Austin, Fort Worth, El Paso, Galveston, Jefferson, Houston, Wichita Falls. And of course, there's always going to be Texas outlaws, cattle drives, the atrocities that were committed. We're going to look at the real lives behind the legends of the Alamo, Jim Bowie, Santa Anna, William Barrett Travis, Davy Crockett, James Bonham. So like I said, welcome to the Texas History Lessons podcast, the podcast that tries to make the adventure of history live for everyone. Got the blues about Texas. That's where I long to go. Down where the folk make Texas. It's the best place I know. Cares of the day are behind me. I've got my ticket to ride. And from now on, you'll find me with my baby by my side. Whenever I go to Chicago, New York City, oh man, I've been a million places, seen a hundred million faces, I'll take the three or grand, oh man. Cause I've got a gal in Texas Down by the Alamo 
Down in the land of complexes Here's the best place I know Here's the best place I know.